typically I'm a bake it from scratch kind of person, but occasionally I find a recipe or a shortcut that is just too good to be true. Well, today I'm going to show you how to make one of my favorite cookies using a cake mix. Hi, thanks for joining me today on Susan's Cozy Kitchen. Today we're making super easy, super delicious chocolate crinkle cookies. I'm glad you joined me. An hour or two before you start making your cookies, you need to let your cream cheese and your butter soften so that you can cream them together easily. I've already done that, so let's get these into the mixing bowl. Also, I have my oven preheating to 350, and I already have parchment paper on my baking sheet, so those things are ready to go. Here's the butter. And that is an eight ounce package of cream cheese and one stick of butter. If you're using your stand mixer, you want to use the paddle attachment. You can do this by hand with a wooden spoon, or you can use just a regular bowl and a hand mixer. So let's get that creaming together. If you're doing this in your stand mixer like I am, um, things tend to get stuck in the beater and they tend to go up the sides of the bowl. So you may need to stop and clean off your beater, push everything down from the sides of the bowl and let it get started again. Much better. Once the butter and cream cheese are nice and creamy, go ahead Leave it on low, maybe on two. Add in one egg. Let that mix in. And one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And again, you may need to stop and scrape down the sides and the bottom of the bowl. Just so that everything mixes together and it gets fully incorporated. Once you get the sides and bottom scraped, back on again. And just let that go until everything incorporates and gets nice and creamy and fluffy together again. It won't take long. Okay, now that you have that, I like to add a little extra cocoa and sugar to the cake mix when I make these cookies. It just helps deepen the flavor a little bit and just make it a little bit less like a cake mix. So I have two tablespoons of cocoa powder and one tablespoon of just pure white sugar. Put those in. And now I'm using a triple chocolate fudge cake mix. Now, just going to pour this in a little at a time and let it mix together. I like to do this on a fairly low speed to turn that down a little bit. Okay, just get that all in there. Just let it all incorporate. Okay, I'm going to stop it again and scrape both my paddle attachment and the bottom and sides of the bowl just to make sure that everything is getting mixed together back down again on low. Okay, now I've finished the part with the mixer and we'll do the last bit by hand. I recommend using a cake mix that has pudding in the mix. If you don't have that, it's okay but I have found that I get the best results with the pudding in the mix cake mixes. So a half cup of the miniature chocolate chips, dump those in there and stir them in. 
and you can use the larger chocolate chips if you want or you can leave the chocolate chips out I just like having that extra chocolate in there can't tell I'm a little bit of a chocolate choc chocoholic it's a stiff dough so you really have to put some muscle into this but get them stirred up as well as you can and then I like to put these in the refrigerator to chill for about half an hour. Okay, the dough is chilled, the oven has preheated, and we are ready to get them in the oven. So I'm just going to do a nice little scoop of dough. I'm going to drop it in there, roll it around, and get it well covered with the powdered sugar. And then I'm just going to put it on the cookie sheet with all that powdered sugar on it. The sugar will melt a bit, it'll settle into the cookie, and as the cookie spreads, the powdered sugar will begin to crinkle and crackle as the cookie spreads and cooks, and then that's what makes our chocolate crinkle cookies. It's going to continue doing this until I have my sheet filled and then into the oven it'll go and they will cook for about 10 minutes at 350. And I don't worry about making these, you know, a perfect round ball. I just drop it straight from my scoop into the powdered sugar and then roll it around and call it good. It doesn't have to be exact. Don't put that stress on yourself. These are meant to be easy. Take the shortcut when you can, you know? Give yourself a break. I did not measure my powdered sugar, but I think I poured out about a cup of powdered sugar into this bowl to roll the, the cookies in. All right, there's my first pan of cookies ready to go in the oven. I'll set the timer for 10 minutes and check them at that point. Okay, it's been 10 minutes. I just took the cookies out of the oven. They look fantastic. They smell amazing. I can't wait to try one. But first, I need to let them cool on here for a minute or two before I move them over here to finish cooling, and then we'll try one. Wow, they look so good. I can't wait. Okay, these have cooled, so I'm going to just very gently take them off with a spatula and move them over here to finish cooling. You can see how they crinkled. You can see up here how they crinkled and just how perfectly they came out. Um, you know, they're not all exactly the same size, but they're close enough. The cookies are ready. Time for a taste test. Just look how yummy that is breaks apart. They're not falling apart, but they do come apart easily. Mm. They're fluffy from the cake mix. They have a little extra chocolate flavor from the cocoa and the miniature chocolate chips. They're not dry. They're just a nice, lovely, fluffy, yummy cookie. Mm. And you're going to have difficulty stopping at just one or even one plate full. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure and give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Make sure you ring that notification bell so that you find out every time I upload a new video to YouTube. Thanks for joining me. God bless.